Sling TSI November 720 Sierra. And uh, we're having to do an overdub because we um, recorded all of this. You can see I'm wearing a, uh, right under my chin, I'm wearing a transceiver um, that it Bluetooths to another part that goes into the camera. But for some reason, none of the video picked up on this, uh, on this uh, video. So now we're having to overdub this entire video. So my wife Emily is here and what we're trying to show is dimpling the uh, horizontal stabilizer skins uh, and that it's really a two person job and um, I was kind of scared to do it a little bit because um, uh, of the bending that you have to do. Either that or we're just really bad ventriloquists. But the, uh, if you have any suggestions as far as uh, dimpling these skins without bending the, the you-know-what out of them, feel free to leave some comments so we can uh, learn from you guys because there's a couple times when those uh, skins make a boing noise and you just kind of cringe when you hear it. Yeah. Okay, so what I was pointing out there was um, that you can see the marks on the... Uh, aluminum and you can see um, where I've scuffed them with the uh, scouring pad and I talk about that and I give you the part number in another video but um, I've also pre-marked out all of the areas that have to be dimpled with a sharpie uh, so you don't make a mistake and dimple the wrong parts now here we're just bending the aluminum but you can see you have to have a fairly significant bend in this aluminum and it really is a two-person job Yeah, it really helps to ho to have two people uh, hold the skin apart when you're trying to dimple. If you try to do it with just one person, um, it's gonna be very difficult to line up those uh, that dimple die with your uh, dimple holes. And not only that, you've got to bend the aluminum and reach up and try to do the uh, dimpling, and that's almost impossible. Uh, it's really a two-person job, and you can see her hand down there pulling the aluminum back and. You know, I was afraid to be doing that part of it because I was afraid we were going to bend it so much that we're going to take the bend out of it uh, and end up hurting the aluminum. Um, but it seems to bounce back pretty well, but it sure is nerve-wracking as we're doing this. Yeah, we didn't have any problem at all with it re regaining its shape uh, or form. It's just like I said, when it makes that noise, you're just worried that you, you just bend it in a really unnatural manner. But it really did uh, just bend right back to its original shape, which was good. And you can see we're doing and just going along and, and uh, a dimpling in the section. Now, I, th I, I think on this particular skin, we had already dimpled the other side. Uh, and we're just showing you uh, the dimpling in there. The top of my die fell out. It falls out every once in a while, so don't feel bad if it happens to you. Um, but uh, you can see how much we're having to bend this, this aluminum here, um, which I didn't realize we'd have to bend it that much in order to do this. Uh, and when you get really over to the leading edge, um, you really, really have to bend it, and that's just nerve-wracking. So, um, like I, you can see me pointing out the scuff marks. Now, I, both of us were talking during this entire um, uh, video that we did, thinking that the audio track was laying down, but uh, apparently wasn't, so that's why we're having to go back and overdub. Yeah, between bending and lining up those dies to match the holes, it's pretty, um, it looks like it's uh, very labor unintensive, but it really is it takes a lot of detail work because you're trying to do both at the same time and deal with a small dime when you get old and crusty like us our eyesight's not quite as good as it used to be so you gotta get down in there line up that die and at the same time bend bend out the the skin uh so you can get those upper holes yeah and there i was pointing to those leading edge uh and i think there's five or six uh, uh holes that you have to dimple there but you gotta really, really bend that aluminum back. And man, I would, at first I was just kind of afraid to do that, uh, but I don't see any other way to do it. Um, 
no matter which dimpler we use, I, I don't I don't see a different way to do that. So we're having to really bend it, but we were just just really kind of afraid that we were gonna hurt the uh, skin uh, and and cause a problem there. But um, we we ended up not. But uh, it sure sure is nerve wracking when when you do that. So um, we're just you know going down the road and. Sometimes she's dimpling and sometimes I'm dimpling. It just depends on who can hold the aluminum in the best place here. Um, so I was just getting down, trying to make sure that we're getting the, uh, the die in, in the exact hole um, before we push it down. One thing I did find was that whoever's holding the skin, when the person who's doing the dimpling brings down that die, if you lay down that leading edge a little bit flatter, then it doesn't um, it doesn't crinkle up your die hole as much. So here here we're just continuing to, to do the dimpling, but in the section that we're coming up to for the leading edge has not been done yet. We've we've done all the way across and and uh, <laughs> here I'm trying to get up. Back's not as strong as it used to be, so. Um, in fact, I remember saying that during the video here, but, uh, here she's, we've swapped and she's holding it and holding back the aluminum and I'm trying to line up these five or six, I think it's five, uh, on the, on the leading edge. Uh, but you got to just really bend out that aluminum and you're just, you know, you're thinking, man, that's a lot of money to be bending aluminum that we spent on and I don't want to mess this up. So I'm trying to make sure we got it as quick as possible and done right. It sure is nerve wracking, especially this last one here. But we got it, and it does conform back to back to shape pretty well, so um, that's good. But like I said, if there's anybody who has done this before and and knows of a better technique, please let us know in the comments or or whatever, um, so that others can learn from learn from us and you. And I think that's the that skin, and and then we have to do the the other side of it. Um, so we're I've I've got the crate still there with the skins in it, and I have a rack with all the other pieces in. So we're bringing out the uh, the other one. So one is done, and and now we're doing the second one here. Um, probably if I knew this video was going to be as long as it was, I would have just talked for one of them. But we went ahead and and talk through uh, doing both of these skins. And here we are just figuring out which way to line everything up so we can start dimpling on this thing. Um, so, uh, like I said, it does help to um, uh, to draw out with a Sharpie um, all the areas that you're going to dimple. Because um, not all of the areas on the skin do you dimple. Uh, only certain areas, and so uh, I think it. I think it behooves you to to use a sharpie, and draw out exactly the areas that do need to be dimpled. Um, less chance of mistakes that way. I'm I'm trying to. We're all learning as we as we build the first part of the airplane, and the empennage is always the first part, and you're trying to get everything right, and it gets easier to build as you go along. But at least that's what everybody tells me. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm just imagining the the tail section on a lot of planes that people put together is, you know, the crop and shift is kind of so-so, that it gets a little better as you move up along the airplane, that it gets a little better until finally your propeller looks all bright and shiny and put together, but the rest of the plane is kind of, kind of not, not so well. Well, hopefully we get, <clears throat> you know, the, at this, at the, at the making of this video, um, the uh, fuselage is on the water, so um, that's the next piece to come in for us. We're not going to do the wings until until last, um, since your fuselage is about 80% of the build. Um, so uh, we're trying to get our techniques down here so that we are not messing up on other parts. But uh, uh, looking at the fuselage, it, it it's a lot to build, but it's um from what everybody says it's a fun build and you can see some real progress not that you can't see progress and nice rivets in the horizontal and vertical stabilizers but 
Um, this is just the first part and you're really not sure what, what you're doing and how you're doing it, but um, you're trying to make sure you do it right and you don't want to mess up, you know, $5,000 worth of aluminum here. So, and I've mentioned a couple of mistakes that I've made along the way um, already. So, uh, try to learn from my mistakes and don't do the same ones. Yeah, every time I bring that, that dimple die down, I'm like, please, God, don't let me mess this up. Please, God, don't let me mess this up. <laughs> and you can see all the scuff marks from the uh, red um, maroon, uh, what, do you, what do you call one of those things? The scrub? Scuff, scuff pads or whatever scrub they are. Head. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Evan says in his videos to go ahead and do that before you even dimple so that when you, um, uh, when, once you get everything dimpled, it's already scuffed up to make the paint stick better in that area. So I went ahead and pre-scuffed all these areas where the, uh, where the uh, holes are uh, and then I marked them everything out with a Sharpie so we knew exactly which ones we had to dimple and which ones we don't so and then again like i say right here i mean this is taking two people to to get this lined up correctly and uh we need to work on our theatrics and not show our backs to our audience as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah we were talking about that the other night when we were viewing this ahead of time thinking yeah you know we we we're not very good actors because our our backs are to the camera every once in a while. I might have to put a sign on your back one of these times. Kick me. <laughs> yeah, and here's that, uh, here's where you gotta really, really bend it. You can't see it because our backs are the, we're not showing this. We're not very good videographers, are we? But uh, those final five that you, that you really have to bend this thing out on the, on the leading edge is just really nerve-wracking um, doing it because you're just afraid that you're gonna warp something and bend the metal wrong and you know you're gonna have to order a new piece and everything. It really didn't turn out that bad though. Um, you know I was expecting a little bit of at least a little bit of warpage but um, it regained its shape pretty well afterwards so all that worry for nothing. And uh, aluminum is pretty, this aluminum and our sling TSIs are pretty, uh, pretty resilient. Yep, there's the dimple. The, the mail fell out again, so that's all right. Every time that thing comes out, it sounds like a game of craps. <laughs> you throw the die. Yeah, again, there's there's my arm in the way of the dimple, but uh, I guess I'm not very good at uh, 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 theatrical stuff, so. Maybe that, we just need to present our props in a different way. Yeah, I, w I was not a... Uh, a theater major, that's for sure. Uh, we're trying to make sure that when we get this all lined up so that when we push that dimpler down, we're exactly in that hole. We don't want to bend, hit, make a new hole and bend it in the wrong spot. So, um, you know, again, this is that, those last few on the uh, leading edge that are just pretty uh, nerve wracking to, to get those last ones. You want to get them down and dimple and really quick and then let the aluminum bend back and um, so but as you can see it 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 does fold back pretty well so that's good there I can you can see I've outlined the round areas and you can see on this side I've used the sharpie and and uh, outlined all the areas that have to be dimpled so uh, this is the final final one uh, section and of course we're looking at it going hey wait a minute we gotta we gotta put the other piece down so trying to get those all figured out it actually looks pretty nice once you get all those dimples in yeah 
Yeah, and when you put your rivets in, your, your flush rivets down into those holes, boy, it just really looks nice. And you're just thinking about the airplane and how well it looks and just gives you some confidence that uh, you actually did something right. Yeah, you can see I'm I'm trying to hold the aluminum and it, it's you have to bend that section down and on the other side and of course there I am getting in front of the camera again but a little malfunction there. Of course at at the time I was talking into this into the transceiver that I've got on my shirt the entire time. We both were talking into it and we thought we were recording, but uh turns out we weren't. So uh, another problem we have to figure out, but we'll get that one of these days. I'll quit overdubbing these. Yeah, it's a learning process for everything that we're doing here, so. Yeah, this is new to both of us. We've neither one of us have done anything like this. We've certainly flown an aircraft and we've been passengers and we've flown in the cockpit and did some stick time, but, uh, Certainly uh, haven't built our own airplane, so this is a new experience for both of us. Yeah, all the AV stuff, too, is... We, I've never done anything like that before. I, I was not in the cool kids club in high school to be in the AV club, so... I didn't learn all this. Yeah, I didn't learn how to do it. Of course, I didn't have all this stuff when I, when I was in high school, so we didn't have anything fancy like that. In fact, I'm not even sure VHS had come out yet. No, I guess I'm showing my age, but oh well. <laughs> well, the computers we had in high school, my senior year, were uh, Apple PC Juniors. And they had a screen about the size of a Cracker Jack box. And you could write very simple if-then programs, a little bit of binary code, and that was about as extensive as mine. My programming went. Oh, you got much more than I did then. It wasn't until I got into college that I saw my first computer and it was a mainframe. It wasn't even, PCs hadn't even come out yet. Yeah, we just uh, continuing to dimple on the line here. Uh, but uh, like I said, it was it was nice to have this all um, uh, marked out ahead of time with Sharpie so we knew exactly what we had to dimple and what areas we did not. So um, I'm, I'm sure you probably already thought about it when you're building your airplane, but uh, or doing your horizontal stabilizer. If you're watching me and you've already done that, you probably did the same thing. I think we should invent a mass dimpler where instead of just one die, it's got like four or five of them. Yeah, that'd be good, of course. Or on the, a wheel or something. Of course, then the price would be much higher, so. <laughs> yeah, but we're the inventors, so. We have copyrights and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Let me know what you think in the comments. <laughs> all right, we're getting pretty close to the end, but you can see how much you've got to bend out that aluminum on that uh, leading edge for those last five there. Uh, and it's, like I said, it, it's just nerve-wracking because you're... You're just afraid that you're gonna bend the aluminum the wrong way and it's just not gonna go back and you're gonna have to order another piece from Sling in South Africa and it's gonna take weeks to get here and hold up your build. But yeah, we pulled it, pulled on it and uh, got it dimpled and, and uh, it came back together actually better than I thought it was going to. I was afraid at this point to, of doing these things.
I don't know if you can tell, but it really doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to bring that, that die uh, hammer down. It's, it's very simple. It's, it's not hard at all. Yeah, and I, I was kind of surprised that when we started dimpling, how easily those dies just punch that uh, that dimple into the aluminum. And, and uh, it, like you said, it didn't take much pressure at all, and it, it just looked really nice. And we're getting those last ones out at the... This is the area that I always keep saying, and it just feels weird when you're bending the aluminum that far on the leading edge, but you've got to get it out there to do it. And there I'm trying to hold it out, and she's doing the dimples, so. And you can see I've lined out all the areas that, that we need to dimple, so. Uh, and there, that's what it looks like. And it does come back together there. The aluminum uh, uh, warp, I won't say warps back into its, uh, into its uh, uh, form, but it, it certainly bends back into the form that it's supposed to. Yeah. And now that we've got both of them, uh, we've got the framework sitting there and we're just kind of putting the skins over on top of the framework uh, for the very first time. This is the very first time we've ever done this and, and uh, uh, we wanted to, to see what it would look like and it uh, looks kind of nice. It's not lined up there. That takes a little click going, but uh, at least it sits on there and you're like, wow, oh, okay, this actually looks like a horizontal stabilizer now. Yeah, there's a certain amount of satisfaction, too, that comes from putting that skin on. Because before then, it looks kind of like, uh, like, you know, the skeleton of the airplane is kind of like Terminator without the Schwarzenegger suit on. But once you start putting the the skins on, it starts looking like a, like a piece to an airplane. You're just like, wow, okay, this is cool. And you can see we're putting in the first Clecos there to kind of hold the skin onto the framework. One by one. One by one, get them in there. Yeah, I think the date that we uh, recorded this, or the, uh, the video anyway, was on uh, September 30th. Um, don't remember if it was a Saturday or Sunday or whatever, but uh, uh, today is October 16th. So um, our, uh, our our friend who is doing uh, helping us with all this uh, uh, AV stuff, he, he took a couple of these uh, um, things that we made, these, these videos, and spliced them together and said yeah the audio didn't come out and sent it back to us and now we're doing the audio overdub and there you can see i was using some ice picks or oz to try to uh help line things up this is our first attempt at uh, uh putting in clecos of the skin onto the framework and so we at this point we still have a lot to learn on, on how to uh how to get all this stuff lined up and for the most part, they fit in pretty well, and I was happy about that because it would have been very hard to deal with emotionally <laughs> when when we did all that work to do those dimples and, and fit the dyes in and everything and not have uh, the skin line up right. So, um, yeah, I probably saved myself a lot of tissues and uh, glad that it fit together like it did. Yeah, hats off to Sling who engineered this uh, so meticulously that uh, once you get it all uh, lined up and everything, um, very little match drilling that you have to do. The, uh, the holes pretty much line up uh, 
takes a little while to get them to line up, uh, but that's and that's okay. Um, and we talk more about that in in a in a, a different video, I think, um, where we talk about how to how to put in the clecos. Um, we were just putting in clecos here. We didn't even know um, that we did what we were doing here. Um, we we did have a friend come over a little bit later and and uh, exp who built a sling too. Uh, and we were explaining the problems we were having getting this to line up and he showed us a better way to do it and after we did that then it became a, it, all the holes just lined up perfectly. Yeah, especially when you're trying to push the Clico through multiple layers of... Okay, that those two, those two ribs right there... Um, what I'm showing everybody is that I went, I, without thinking about it, um, as I was uh, dimpling the outside ribs, I went ahead and dimpled those two ribs and the front sections. Um, and don't do that. You don't, do not need to uh, dimple those ribs on the top and bottom because when you put the skins on, those are the areas that you, that you have not dimpled on, on that skin. You don't need to. Uh, it's up close to the body of the uh, uh, fuselage of the aircraft, and you do not need to dimple those. So, and that's what I'm saying there that is that I made a mistake and I, I dimpled those two ribs right there that I'm showing there in the front. Uh, but but don't do that. You you do not need to do that. It's only the outside uh, three ribs that you need to dimple, not the inside one. Yeah, it's mistake rebuild number one. Well, luckily that's that's not that big of a deal right there, and and the uh, when I, when I finally did rivet that, uh, they riveted in very tightly, um, but uh, it's it didn't do it flat like I I should have done. Uh, had I realized not to dimple those those inside ribs. Here we go with skin number two. Yeah, you know, you get your crate and it's got all these pieces in there and you're trying to figure out what goes where and and uh, uh, and as you're going through this slowly, you, you realize that, yeah, it all fits together and it sure looks nice. And uh, But uh, it just, in the beginning, you're kind of overwhelmed by all the parts that you've got and what to do with them. <laughs> So here we are just dimpling, uh, not dimpling, I'm sorry, uh, clecoing the skins uh, onto the ribs, uh, onto the framework for the first time. And she's got her back to the camera, which we, we, we need to, uh, we'll, we'll keep doing, I'm sure, but, but we really shouldn't be doing that if we were, if we were doing, knew, if we knew what we were doing with uh, uh, audio and video, then uh, we shouldn't have our back to the, and you can see me working a, a, a ice picker all over there, uh, trying to get the holes to line up a little bit. Um, and, and you'll do some of the same thing, but um, it really does, if, if you click it in the, in the right direction, um, the, the, back towards the uh, trailing edge, um, those holes all come together really well uh, when, once you get to them, once you've got everything else click out in place and start working your way back. Every, everything just looks, comes into, into uh, alignment very nicely. And it looks pretty too. <laughs> there were a couple we had to use off to, to line things up a little bit better. Like I said, when you're going through multiple layers, it's hard to get all layers lined up perfectly with one another. And all it takes is one to be off center just a little bit to keep that Clico from going through the way it's supposed to. Yeah, I think it's the first time we, we'd gone through uh, multiple layers of, of uh, aluminum, the skins, and as well as the ribs and, and different sections of the spar, uh, which have multiple layers of aluminum on them. But 
But that was kind of fun because it went a little bit faster than the uh, the dimpling did. Yeah, and when when you got it to, uh, got the skins on the framework, you could say, "Oh, look, this actually looks like a real airplane airplane part now." So, kind of makes you a little excited to see something that actually looks like an airplane part. You know, we've been planning this for a year before we uh, got to this stage here, and and uh, you know we've got however many years to go, probably three or four more years to go, but, um, you know, slowly we, we make progress and we learn from the early mistakes and that's why we build the empennage first. Putting this whole thing together, like he says, it looks really cool once you start putting things together and they start looking like airplane parts. And we were talking during this audio, but uh, yeah, I think I think here we were trying to to get lined up the very trailing edge. Uh, I'm sorry, the very leading edge. Um, uh, ribs because when when you clico them in and when you rivet them and you've got to bend them out a little bit and so they don't line up exactly with the skins when when you're um, putting this together for the first time so um, here we were trying to figure out how how do we get this to line up perfectly um, and she was reaching in bending them over a little bit while I was trying to line them up and get a clico in and and uh um, so we, we, we found out that we'd, we'd bent, not on purpose, but they were, they were just out of, out of shape, probably a, a degree or two, but it, but it made it so they didn't line up exactly. And that's what we were trying to figure out here, how to, how to get that section, that, uh, very front rib that's in the, uh, leading edge, how, how to get them lined up with these holes. And we did, it just took a little coaxing. Yeah, we eventually eventually got them all all down, and and you'll see riveting in an, in another uh, uh, series of uh, of videos we've got coming up uh, where we have started uh, to rivet all this area down. So we eventually got uh, lots and lots and lots of clicos in, and uh, uh, everything lined up and and matched. But uh, it's a learning process you know this is this is the first part of the build and that's why it is the first part and uh, you just got to keep going with it and, and try to um, build on your experiences of what you're doing and we'll become better and better at each part as well um, once we get close to the end of the build We'll be able to show other people from our mistakes and learn from others still. We'll always be the student. Yeah, I've had several other friends that have recently completed builds and almost every one of them says, yeah, I'm gonna build another one. <laughs> All right, almost the end of the video here. So I uh, uh, hope you've stayed tuned for this and if you've made it this far, thank you. Good night, everybody.